All right, hello everybody. Tom Stimulus with True North Group. And we are here for our Tuesday Cybersecurity Facebook Live put on by Virginia Small Business Development Center. And today we're gonna revisit a topic that we've done before on Facebook and I talk about a lot when we do our webinars, but it's really password insecurity. I'm not even gonna say password security because uh, that would be an oxymoron. So we're gonna call it password insecurity. And the reason is that passwords have been around since the beginning of the internet. And one of the things that uh, has gotten progressively more difficult is that they're very easy to exploit. Uh, a lot of times you, when you're dealing with a, uh, a password, it's the complexity of the password, but it's also the uh, where it's stored. And that's where a large majority of our challenges are, is that these data breaches that are occurring, one of the first things, the first files that they'll actually want to get is the password uh, file, which has usernames and passwords. And if it's encrypted, it depending on how it's encrypted, if it's not encrypted, then it's all open text. And they've learned over time that we as humans can only maintain so many passwords uh, in our heads before we actually have to start writing them down. So they're, they play the law of averages that if you're using this password, there's a good possibility that you're going to be using that username and password someplace else. Uh, that and, you know, in the enterprise world, they've gotten much better. So the federal government and the enterprise world have really gotten much better where they require complex passwords. Um, so it's, uh, you know, eight, 10 characters. It may be, uh, it'll be uh, alphanumeric with uh, an upper and a lowercase a number and a special character. And those char the, those types of passwords, um, if just stolen and encrypted, all right, um, we've shared that, you know, it could be 106 years, it could be 1100 years, it could be, you know, 4,000 years that based off of the technology that we have available in the password crap, uh, cracking software, it'll take them that long to decrypt your password. So that's a very strong password. But we have a lot of small and medium businesses that haven't implemented those types of controls yet. And they're just letting people pick easy passwords. Um, and unfortunately, as humans, if we can pick easy passwords, we do pick easy passwords. And, you know, every year they, uh, you know, the, the passwords that are stolen get reviewed by, uh, you know, other organizations. And then they post, you know, the, the, the top 10 uh, worst passwords. And what you're going to see a year after year, you know, some you know, one might be one number one, and then it might go to number three, then back to two, whatever. But year after year, one, two, three, four, five, six, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, password, all lowercase, password with a capital P, password with a one at the end. Those, those are, aren't even passwords, all right? That's just really a waste of time because words like that, all right, have zero, uh, uh, if, if they use a password cracking software, it will be zero. Uh, the, there will be no time whatsoever that they get the password, all right? So, you know, if you have to use passwords, we really encourage you to use uh, stronger passwords, even if you don't have to, all right? Add a little complexity to it. Uh, so what I try to tell people is take a word, all right? And you can even use the word password. Use a capital P, all right? And I'm not saying use this password, but this is what I'm saying is any word that you use. Uh, use an at sign instead of the A, all right? Use, you know, you've got your S's, you've got your W's. You can use a, a, a zero instead of an O. Uh, you can use a zero instead of a D. You can add uh, a special character at the end. Just those little changes, all right, will be significant if your passwords are stolen from some other database. And the biggest thing it does is it gives you time to go in and change passwords. Uh, you know, I tell everybody, do not use the same password that you use for your Gmail with your credit cards or your, um, or your bank. 
uh, because that will happen. Now, another thing that we want to keep in mind is how we're sending our passwords. Um, I've talked a number of times about open Wi-Fi and how not to use open Wi-Fi for anything critical or sensitive. So therefore, do not connect to your business unless you're using a VPN. Do not connect to your bank or your credit cards or anything that interacts with your financial or requires a financial transaction. So something tied to a debit card, credit card, whatever. Don't do it on open Wi-Fi ever unless you have a path, unless you have a VPN. Now, when I say that, if you're on your cellular, um, your, your cellular technology, that's okay. But if you're on Starbucks or you're at a hotel and you're sitting in the lobby and you're waiting on your friends to get there because you guys are heading to the beach and you're like, okay, I'm gonna go pay a bill. Don't do it without a VPN because you're just putting yourself at risk, especially if you're at a, uh, a location that you're not used to being around. You don't know who else is there. You don't know who else is monitoring that network and is looking to steal your passwords and usernames. Now, another thing that you can do, which is very easy, all right, even if you don't want to use super complex passwords, is using two-factor authentication. All right, and, or I'm going to say multi-factor authentication because it doesn't just have to be two. But a lot of companies, Google, LinkedIn, uh, QuickBooks, whatever you're using, uh, a lot of them, even Instagram, all right, offers what they call multi-factor authentication. So what that means is that you're going to have to use your password and then you're going to have to uh, input a code. And you're going to either get that code from a generator uh, and would that be a, a, a code generator? If you've ever had to log into uh, Facebook on a website, they're requiring it now. You log in, you give them your username, your password. They say, please plug in the code. You have to actually go to your phone and get the, gener the generated code. You plug that in, and then it asks you if you want to remember this browser, whatever, okay? Um, Instagram does that. So if you're using these, and, and, and like I said, you're using these applications and it doesn't cost you any money, then turn it on. Uh, it will either send you the one-time code through text or you'll have the, uh, the generator. Uh, Google has their own generator. It's free. Uh, Facebook has their own generator. Instagram will probably use this uh, Facebook's. So what that means is if that password that you're using is stolen, either from you or from um, a database uh, where you had a username and account um, because they got breached, then even with the password, even if it was just password, all right, which, you know, P-A-S-S-W-O-R-D, all lowercase, there is no security in that whatsoever. Without that additional factor, they can't use your password and your username to access that account. That's very, you know, that's a big deal, all right? So use that. You might think it's a bit of an inconvenience, but if you've ever spoken to somebody who's had their identity uh, stolen and the amount of time, the effort, the frustration, the money uh, that they had to spend to get their identity back, you'd realize that the extra five to eight seconds to have an additional uh, authentication is well worth it. And the same thing goes with your iPhone, right? You should have your iPhone using a six character password, Samsung, same thing. Um, but you can use facial recognition. That facial recognition is a biometric standard, right? And those are the three standards that you really need to understand. One is something you know, which is your password, something that you have, which is a token or a phone, where you can get that one-time password. And the last thing is who you are, which could be a retina scan, a palm print, a fingernail scanner, fingerprint scanner, something like that. All of those layers create a better set of defense so that even if your passwords are stolen, the chances of them being able to use that to gain access to your, your financial information or sensitive data information is much more difficult using that multi-factor. All right, so uh, we're going to talk again about password managers. I really believe that is the, the key to all of this, where you can actually have complex passwords and uh, still be able to be secure and not have to worry about trying to remember them or writing them down on a post-it note, 
put it on your computer, on your keyboard, all the places that we look for uh, are all the places you guys put this stuff. So I hope you got something from it today. Think about how, as you're going into your applications that you use on a regular basis, go into the settings and see if they offer a multi-factor authentication. If they do, I highly encourage you to take advantage of it. And we look forward to seeing you next week for our next Facebook Live. Have a great day, everybody. Bye.